Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. You're watching Newsnight, and we still have here with us the Managing Director of the Kenya National Trading Corporation, Pamela Mutua. And of course, we did the first part of the interview, uh, and we do need to talk a bit about the fertilizer distribution that she got into a bit earlier on. But before that, I have two questions that I quickly want to run you through from our viewers. Let's put the first one up. All right, here's the first one. Uh, and this is what someone is asking. Okay. Um, fears abound in Parliament that there was no competitive bidding as provided for under the Public Procurement and Asset Disposal Act and that the contracts were simply dished out to favoured entities. Is this true? Uh, yeah, uh, not quite. I mean, I think we did not dish out. You don't dish out contracts. Um, as KNTC, we are very prudent in how we manage our procurement. And I would want to assure Kenyans that uh, there was no dishing out of contracts or people walking along the street to come and collect contracts from KNTC. We've done this in the most due diligence. Uh, we've actually even uh, researched, or is it called, uh, done due diligence on the suppliers to make sure that they can deliver on the contracts that, they, that we've given them. Uh, the contracts are also structured in such a way that I think they favor KNTC more uh, because uh, it's not easy to get suppliers uh, giving you commodities on credit. We have people giving us credit even up to almost 300 days mm -hmm. um, so that we can be able to balance what we need to deliver and also to be able to manage that we can be able to pay. Uh, as you appreciate, we'll be paying back in dollar. And uh, so it, with all those facets in mind, we did our negotiations in a very diligent what way. What is the value of the credit line that you've gotten from KCB? How much? What's, what's the total amount? Uh, 24 billion. Kenya shillings? Yes. Um, number one, what is the expenditure of that 24 billion? What's the anticipated expenditure of that 24 billion? Uh, how much is going to foodstuffs? How much is going to fertilizer? Okay, for fertilizer, uh, we've uh, we, we allocated. Uh, allocated around, I think the LCs we've given are around 6 billion to 9 billion. Uh, to, you know, I have to get a specific number. But the food commodities is where we've given a lot more, um, you know, to, to the tune of around 15, 16 billion. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, you'll be paying back in dollars at a time when the country is hard pressed yeah. for dollars. Mm -hmm. Some would question the logic of that at a time like this. Uh, well, you know, the, uh, the, the dollar situation is not unique to Kenya. So that's one thing first we have to appreciate. And uh, all trading, uh, most trading globally is done by U.S. dollars. So that's why I said uh, because of taking that into consideration, we negotiated a longer credit period so that it can enable us to observe the performance of the dollar and be able to, um, you know, look for dollars um, or buy dollars um, at a reasonable rate because we have the leeway of time. So we are not paying on site and we are not paying in one month. Uh, you know, a period of six months to a year is good enough actually for you to be able to balance your, uh, you know, your trading as well as uh, your payment in dollars. So when can we expect the arrival of the foodstuffs, rice, cooking uh, we've oil? We've started receiving rice uh, coming in containers, received at the port of Mombasa. We are storing some foodstuffs in Mombasa. We have uh, warehouses in Mombasa. We have warehouses in Nairobi. Uh, so we'll also store some foodstuffs in Nairobi. Um, we intend to start distribution on 1st of April. Uh, we are consolidating um, everything, the distribution uh, plan, so that we can be ready. Um, and of course, uh, communication to the consumer is very critical. One thing we've realized is that when the consumer, that is a Kenyan consumer, knows what price they need to pay. A good example, big fertilizer. You remember His Excellency, the President, kept talking about 3,500, 3,500. So all farmers know they should not pay a shilling more than 3,500, and we've managed that very well. So we want to communicate the pricing between now and April. We'll be able to tell the, you know, the consumers or the people we are targeting how much uh, a kilo of rice will come, how much a liter uh, of cooking oil, and how much uh, a kilo of uh, beans, so that they can ideally demand for that price when they go to the shops. Okay. Yeah. Now that you've brought us and you've waded us into the fertilizer conversation with rains expected in certain parts of the country, uh, according to the weatherman. In which counties will farmers access the fertilizer? In the, can they access the fertilizer in their stores right now? And are there plans to roll out beyond that? 
Okay. Um, Wahika, one thing you need to appreciate is the planting cycles, and that's what we've worked with. So we started in the, um, we started with uh, a bit of Nyanza, South Rift, North Rift, and um, Western uh, Province who started planting from mid January. They are still ongoing, and uh, we've added. Um, I think we added like five more counties just two weeks back in March, uh, as you know, uh, in the beginning of March. Uh, we are now going into Central Province. Actually, uh, tomorrow we'll be mapping out Central Province and uh, Eastern Province so that uh, you know the counties in those regions to be able to analyze the data and know how much fertilizer we need to take to a specific. Uh, specific region based on the acreage the farmers have registered in those regions of course we keep encouraging farmers to register uh, there are different stakeholders in this that the people uh, the you know Kenya National Bureau of Statistics that is collecting the data uh, there's Calro that is managing the data and cleaning it up to make sure that it's up to date and then there's uh, we have worked with Safaricom on the e-voucher so that we update the the data to e-voucher and it's from there that we are able to know uh, you know the, the we know if we're going to central province then the farmers will get their vouchers through the phone on an SMS and then they can start redeeming. Uh, we are targeting to be in Central Province and Eastern from mid of this month. So from next week, actually Monday, we start now um, uh, placing the fertilizer in NCPB stores. We will also be discussing with counties where there are limited NCPB stores to give us uh, some allocation space where we can be able to store the fertilizer nearer to the farmers. Which fertilizer brand are you particularly primarily distributing? Uh, for planting, we are distributing, uh, we have Yara Microp, it's a blend, an NPK blend. Uh, we have uh, ETG NPK2323, and we have uh, called Falcon, under the brand name Falcon. Then we have N, um, an ETG Kinomazek, it's also an NPK blend. And then we have KNTC, we imported directly NPK2323. Uh, we've also planned uh, top dressing, which uh, we'll start distributing maybe towards the beginning of April. Uh, we have CAN, which is, uh, you know, uh, the, the bulk of it, mm -hmm. and uh, a bit of urea. And I ask that question because, uh, you know, we have teams across the country and farmers in the Rift Valley, for example, I'm told, prefer DAP fertilizer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yet, this is what you're bringing, the NPK primarily. Why, why NPK? Okay, um, it would have been great to have someone from the Ministry of Agriculture. They actually have a fertilizer department that guided um, uh, this discussion. So DAP has been known to increase uh, soil acidity. And hence, uh, for the farmers who use DAP, they actually have to add lime, uh, which is also ad another cost uh, to be able to ensure that uh, the DAP performs optimally. Uh, we did not feel the need to do that as government because that is like having, if you, if you have a bag of DAP, then you need a bag of lime, and that's an extra cost. So we felt that we need to go for the right fertilizer and encourage farmers to know that this is the right fertilizer for their soils. It doesn't stop someone from using DAP, so I need to just uh, say that. Um, it just means that uh, the cash outlay is a bit, uh, you know, is a bit more for a farmer who uses DAP. Okay. To understand your distribution and, and how the whole network works, for the products that you are importing, you contract companies to import them, and then will you contract other companies to distribute them, and, and, and how do you ensure that there's efficiency through that efficiency through that whole chain. Okay, as I've said that, uh, yes, we do have companies that are bringing the product uh, to our warehouses, uh, DAP to uh, Mombasa or Nairobi. And uh, then we have distribution um, uh, distributors that uh, we recruited. And as I've said, we focus on a, a fintech, fintech distributors, uh, majorly because we wanted to be assured that um, the price to the customer is not interfered with. And secondly, we also needed to ensure that someone does not buy bulk and then go and 
put them in different bags and sell them at a higher price. Uh, so those are the kind of elements we are looking at when we are looking at the distributors. How can we be able to uh, ensure that it reaches the customer we want because we have a you know specific target and uh, we do not want um, we do not want that deviation because um, it was important that the, the you know the the duty free passed on to us is also passed on to the consumer. Okay. I, I mentioned we have another question uh, for you. Let's put that up on the screen. Uh, remember, 2242 is the SMS line, and the hashtag is Newsnight this evening. Edwin wants to know, if distribution targets some specific shops, are we likely to create different classes of Kenyans? What guarantees do we have that the middle class won't access, the, won't be the ones accessing the food? Okay, so uh, we, we, as I said, we are very specific about the bottom of the pyramid and even the stores mapped uh, to buy the food uh, by the same distributors, we have actually looked at the regions where the people who have the lowest incomes are, are, are situated. So it's really highly unlikely that you'll find this being sold in the kiosk in uh, middle class areas. And Madam MD, you'll pardon my skepticism, the country yeah, has sure. not had a very good history yes. of subsidy programs like this. Yeah. Even relief food has ended up in the wrong hands. Yes. What guarantees can you give us that for the bulk Mm. of foodstuffs that will be in your possession, mm. that they'll actually get to the right homes? Well, I, as I've said, it's about mapping. Uh, you know, if you do not map where the, the, stores will, the stores will go, then that's where you'll find that uh, the, it's a gray area. And that's why I've said we've mapped only the low income areas. We are not targeting the middle class or the upper class in this in scenario. And it's not to say that the cost of living is not pinching in those areas, but I think we need to address the urgent need, which is the low income areas, and that's those places. So the Madare North of this world, the Kiberas, that's where you'll find in those kiosks that it will be easily directed. And I'm saying this with confidence because um, the people we wanted to work with, the distribution mechanism we have put in place, which is digitally driven, mm -hmm. will be very specific. From my office, I'll be able to know that kiosk of Sara has bought. I can actually go to kiosk of Sarah that day and check whether she was stocked on that day. If I'll be able to know mm -hmm. when she orders, when she reorders. So I'll be able to know if it's a bag of rice, how long did it take that kiosk to complete? With, with that so information at your fingertips, if there's a gap, what do you do? Take it to the police? Take it to the DCI? Uh, no, we, we, I mean, if those things happen where we find, I mean, I think for me, the most, the, the worst risk I would expect is where uh, there's a kiosk that will buy 50 bags. That is not expected. If you look at the buying patterns of the retail sector, especially the kiosks, they'll buy one bag. It is even difficult to buy a 50 kilo bag. They actually buy a 25 kilo bag because of the cash outlay. Uh, the capital they have is very low. So if they have to buy different products, it's highly unlikely that it'll be a kiosk will order 10 bags. So even with the distributors, we have put that as a red mark. If someone orders because you have to order online and then the distributor delivers, there's no way as a, as a kiosk you'll be ordering 10 bags. How will you motivate that kiosk to sell your cheaper product first? Would it be you know, in their best interest for them to hoard what is cheaper or maybe use it for personal use and then sell off more expensive products? We had an UNGA subsidy program that many Kenyans testified they did not actually see the cheaper products even though the government told us they were out in supermarkets. Well, I, I do not want to comment on the UNGA subsidy program because I don't know how it was executed, but I can comment on this one that, you know, uh, distribution is a value chain. So it's about how much you give the kiosk person to make it worth their while to sell your rice versus their competitor. And for me, I think we have done the math and it's adequate enough for that kiosk person to feel incentivized to sell our rice or our cooking oil or our beans. Okay, we'll take two more questions. Let's put up the uh, next one on the screen. Remember, 2242 is the SMS line and the hashtag is Newsnight. Um, John wants to know, how did they identify the retail shops where the duty-free commodities will be sold? 120,000? 
Yes. Uh, as I've said, we identified the distributors and then they, working with our teams, uh, were able to map uh, the, the shops from their list of where they supply. Now, uh, as I said, fintech distributors do not go through wholesalers or, uh, you know, uh, other distributors. They go directly to the retailer. Um, you will not find this product in a supermarket, uh, just to clarify. It will be in the kiosk. Uh, which is near, um, uh, which is near uh, uh, the, the consumer. So that is our targeted audience. So mm. based on their reach, where they are already selling, we mapped out and hived at 120,000 uh, stores across the country. Another element you need to know about the kiosks, uh, because of um, you know there's licensing and all that. Sometimes a kiosk is there today, tomorrow it's not. It doesn't exist. It has moved and opened a few doors back, mm. uh, a, a few doors um, away. So it's important for us to also understand the behavior of the retail sector for us to be able to apply uh, what it is that we want to do effectively. Okay. And that's the, so that's the reason why we have to use a party who's as an expert uh, in the distribution network in and, that sense. and from a governance perspective one viewer has a question this evening they're asking do you have two sets of board directors as KNTC and two chairs <laughs> that's an interesting question uh, we just got a board appointed um, I think it was last week Friday mm -hmm. and um, was the previous board revoked was the appointment revoked Oh, I'm, I'm not quite sure about that, so uh, So I think um, most likely it has been revoked. Um, and the chair, I think we have one chair and, uh, you know, appointed. And uh, we also had an existing chair. And I think there's just some bit of uh, happenings in between there. I think KNTC has become a bit popular. So everyone wants to be in KNTC. And we welcome all of them, you know. Um, the board's work is to oversight. And uh, we are confident that uh, the people who've been appointed um, will do a great job, just as they're exiting, the ones who have exited, uh, if at all. I think they have brought KNTC to where it is. So, it, you know, we, we appreciate uh, the role of the board and the chair uh, in whatever capacity. Before I give you your parting shot, another message that's come in uh, from a viewer is, um, ask the managing director whether there's a plan to move KNTC's headquarters or offices uh, from uh, where they are now to a private office at Two Rivers? Uh, no, there's no there's no discussion as that. Uh, reason being KNTC, where we are situated, Wahiga, you could come and see. We are in the middle of our warehouses, and warehousing is part and parcel of our business. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's the core of our business. So it doesn't make sense to move the head office because the people who work in the head office, we are always in our warehouse. You know, if I need something and I want to clarify something, we walk to our warehouses. So it's highly unlikely that we will have that kind of move happening. We are in our own premises, um, uh, fully owned, uh, with no loan. Uh, so, we, it, you know, it, it's prudent for us to stay where we are because of the type of business we do. So no move on the plate? No, I've not heard about that. Okay. Yeah. As a parting shot, what is the ex anticipated income in impact of the arrival of these foodstuffs? Uh, is it to tackle a cost issue? Is it to tackle... Uh, a lack of availability issue because we're dealing with various issues around food security at a time like this. So what, what have your, the predictions shown will be the impact of the arrival of the foodstuffs in the quantities that have been outlined in that uh, notice? I think for me, uh, the short term, as I've said, uh, that the, the food uh, allocations are based on uh, the deficits we have in the country. Uh, short term is to meet the, to address the cost of living. Long term, if we continue with the business as we have been doing, uh, KNTC is to make sure, uh, even if we are not importing, as I've mentioned, uh, KNTC has been one of the largest buyers of rice uh, in Mwea and in Nyanza. We have been looking now. We are uh, we are now looking at aggregating uh, Ndengu, um, and I, I think our minister has been on this platform talking about aggregation centers in the counties. Uh, we are the ones who will be championing that to find market because that's also one of our mandates. How can we assist farmers or even other players, SMEs, to find markets for their wares, both locally and you know, uh, at export uh, level? And it's something that we know in the shortest time possible will come, uh, will come to life. And on a final note, and I've asked this before, and, I, and I'll ask it again, 24 billion Kenya shillings is not pocket change. It isn't. Uh, your measures to ring fence this project against corruption for those who would hear that and, and want to get 
in the, involved in it? What are they? Have you anticipated where the loopholes would be and yeah. plugged them fully? Yes. And uh, one thing I want to mention is that, um, you know, KNTC is proven. Uh, we've been given as a grant by government, we were given 600 billion shillings uh, to buy rice and not a cent got lost. In fact, we tripled that amount. By the time we were given this project, we had tripled that amount to 2.6 billion. It had actually spurred the growth of KNTC from only selling rice. We had started buying local sugar. Uh, we've been buying local beans. Uh, so we've been doing it in a small way. As I say, just because we're not shouting from the rooftop, it's not because we were not making impact uh, in the society. 600 million or 600, 600 million. Not That's billion. what you're oh, Not billion. Okay. 600 million and we're able to convert it to 2.6 billion mm -hmm. uh, worth of capital uh, in one and a half years. So the possibility of, uh, I'm not saying there are no risks, so we've looked at it, and that's why I said we did not go for a loan. We went for a letter of credit, mm. and that's trade finance. And um, the risks on that are only in the element of if we sell and then we don't pay. But so long as the money is coming directly to our account, and that's what I've said, just like fertilizer, I wish we could take you through our e-voucher. The farmer is not, there's no one touching our cash. Mm -hmm. The farmer is paying directly into our bank account. And I think it's one of the things that has been very, you know, um, you know, um, uh, unique in this whole thing that we have looked to it, that we have closed all the loopholes where any money can get lost. MD, thank you for your time this evening. We've been speaking with Pamela Mutua, who's the Managing Director of the Kenya National Trading Corporation. Uh, it's no secret out there, the country going through one of the worst times in terms of a drought in the country and the region, and food prices insecure and stable at a time like this. The Kenya National Trading Corporation, one of its key tasks is food stabilization. And she's been speaking about a program that they are rolling out. She says from April 1st, we'll have lots of food in the country, rice, beans, you name it. And uh, she's spoken a bit about the impact that that is supposed